show you our touch bar functions in the MBS FileMaker plugin version 6.5. As you see, I use a touch bar simulator here to show you the actual touch bar. When I open the example solution, I, it creates automatically a few buttons here. So we have a few scripts which install a set of buttons in the touch bar. On the right we have a button labeled debugger. I can click it to toggle the debugger. Click. And again. The next button does the same except that it uses a data viewer. Then we have two buttons here to move to next record and to move back. And here is a button with a custom picture. The picture is coming from the container field here and triggers a script which shows a dialog box with a plugin version. Let's take a look on the script editor, how this works. This is a start script. It's run automatically when you open this database and it builds the touch bars. So here it builds an app-wide touch bar and a Windows-specific touch bar. We open the script. So first we create a new touch bar object and we get back the ID. Then we add a button here. The button has an identifier. It has, in this case, a template for the image. It has a label for the customization dialog, but no label for the button itself. The priority is zero, which is a default, and it will trigger this script in the current file. The next button is similar, except that we use delete here on the delete image and the delete script. The info button, example, uses an image from a container field and no label and calls the info touch bar script. The next command is a little bit different. To trigger the data viewer and the debugger, we use plugin functions to run menu commands. And this is the ID of the data viewer menu command, and this is the ID of the debugger. You can learn about these ideas, IDs by running plugin functions. So instead of calling a script, we evaluate this expression which calls a plugin function to run the menu command. Next we define the default items for our touch bar and here we list all the identifiers we want to show, including a special one to show where a sub touch bar would fit in. We set our main item here and for the customization we define the allowed items. Then we assign the touch bar to the application. The script for the window is very similar, except that it defines window specific commands. You can switch touch bar for each layout if you need and define different touch bars for different windows. Here we define a button to go to the previous record. We use the template picture from Apple and we trigger a script which then does execute the go to previous record script step as well as here go to next record script step. 
Again, we define our default items. We define the primary button, the allowed buttons for customization, and assign this touchpad to the current window. Here we have the scripts to be called, like the view record, the next record, the delete record, or info button. And that's it. So please go and download our latest plugin in version 6.5 on the website and try it for yourself. If you have any comments or questions, please don't hesitate to contact me.